Now YouTubers, I just got in uh, a baby monitor slash camera system um, and what happened with this is it, it got dropped and obviously it stopped working. Now I've just quickly stripped it and I've had a quick look. I haven't looked at the actual screen part of it yet. Uh, that could be damaged but what I did notice quite quickly was the actual circuit board is cracked. Now you can actually see this crack that goes all the way along there and then it continues all the way along there. Hopefully you can see that. I'll just my finger out of the way. You can actually see the crack all the way along and it actually veers off over there. And there's another tiny one here. Now basically what I'm gonna do with that is we have to fix this first, but unfortunately we can't tell if there's any other damage done to the screen because we have to fix this first. So we could fix this and unfortunately find out the screen is gone. Now if the screen is gone, it's not worth fixing. It's going to cost too much, you might as well buy a new one. So what we're going to do first is we're going to actually see if we can repair this. There's a couple little tips and tricks. It's actually very simple. Um, just get to that crack again. Now on certain parts of it when the crack goes right to the edge of the board you're okay now if it's completely snapped in half you can actually glue it back together which is okay as well but on this this point here the crack finishes in the middle of the board so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drill a hole now you have to be careful when you drill a hole to make sure you're not going through anything on the other side of the board and that will actually stop the crack going any further Obviously here the cracks at the end of the board and here I'm going to drill a hole again. So you want to find out where your cracks begin and start, drill your holes to stop them and then I'll show you the next bit. Now I've actually drilled four holes. Let's get this. One there, one's there, so there's two right next to each other. And then one is here, and the last one then is over here. This one is joined up right with the hole that's already in the board and soldered, so you're okay. Now, if you've got a lot of damage, uh, you can actually put a jumper in uh, a long wire, but I'm gonna, I haven't got a lot of damage here, so I'm actually going to just solder the joints. I'm gonna show you that as well. Now, to be fair, this might not be worth doing. I'm only doing this to show you how to repair a board. Because like I said, the actual TV screen of this could be broke as well. So this most probably isn't worth doing. But it gives you an idea of a circuit board that is and exactly how to do it. So what we're going to do now is literally we're going to have to follow this crack. And wherever it's cracked, we're going to have to scrape away until we get to the copper board. You don't want to scrape too far. So I'm just going to scrape a few of them away here. You can act just basically like that. Now obviously this isn't going to work because it's only a screwdriver, but to scrape it away and get to the board, I'm going to do a few and then I'll turn the camera back on. A sharp knife's usually best. Now as you can see, I've literally just got a normal blade, sharp blade, and I've just scraped away the protective coating on both sides of the, of the tracks on the crack. Now, obviously we're going to have to go through the whole thing. There's no point me showing you on camera because it just take too long and too boring. But you literally just get the knife and you scrape just the protective layer off, just like that. And you can see the copper coming through. Do it enough so you can get solder both sides of it. As you can see, that's all I'm doing. And then you literally solder across the crack. Be careful you don't merge into it and, and touch the other tracks. Again, the best thing with this is flux. Flux is going to be your best mate again. So um, I'm going to do a few of these. I'll try and film it and then you'll get the idea. So I'm just going to do them now. Now, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to solder these jumper, well, these across. Set your soldering iron to be 350 to 360 degrees. You don't want to go any higher else. So you're going to damage the board. Again, flux is going to be your best mate. Now, 
I'm using two different types of solder and the reason is because obviously this particular part here is very thick so I can get away with thicker solder. If I use really thin solder it's going to take me forever. So I'm using 0.3 solder and on the really thick parts this is maybe too thick to be honest but I'll get away with it. One mil solder only for the really thick pad here. All these other bits um, I'm actually going to use the 0.3 solder. Now there's a couple ways you can use the flux and there's loads of different flux. The one I particularly have is I'm going to dip the end of the solder into the flux. You can have a pen and you can dab it on there and you can put other flux on there. There's, there's loads of different types of flux but at the end of the day as long as you're using some type of flux that is going to be the best thing too. So I'm literally dipping the end of this just like that in there and uh, that's going to get me me flux. Now, I'm going to do this obviously a lot better than this. It's just to give you an idea. I'm struggling to do it on camera and to show you at the same time is try and look at the camera and do it at the same time is very difficult. So I'll quickly show you these and then I'm going to turn the camera off, solder a few more joints and then you'll be able to see. But you can hopefully see there now, basically, it might not show too well. I get it. To... I've just put a bit of solder across there and a bit of solder across that one so I'm going to do these these ones now it's going to take a bit of time you have to be a bit patient have a steady hand but at the end of it if you fix it it's like a job well done now I just wanted to actually show you this because it's a big part so it'd be easy for me to do it hopefully I've got to solder all this now I'm using the thicker solder um, but a handy tip is to heat the area up first with the gut, with the soldering iron. So you literally, you can just move it around the area like that. Now, you don't want to go any higher than 350 degrees and you don't want to keep it on one spot for too long because you will do damage. But you're heating up the area and with the flux on the solder, it will just allow it to, to, um, to blend in and, and to soak in a lot easier. If you just try and put the solder on without heating up the area of the board, you're going to do it, but it's going to take more time. It's not going to be as nice a job. So, as you can see, that is going in, and you can actually move it around once it's in. Now, there's a slight mark on the board here where the, there's like a model number, but lucky enough, we've got enough on each side of it to get away with, so I'm not going to be able to put any in there, but... Now... You can see that's it. Now it might, might not look pretty or anything like that, so don't particularly worry about that. And the cleaner you have the area, the better it is. But again, I'm struggling on camera to kind of look at it, to not get my head in the way so you can see at the same time. I'm trying to solder through the camera lens, which is very difficult. Um, I'll just zoom out and show you all the other bits I've done. Now what I've done so far is obviously you just see me do that and these two here and I've done them two there. So I'm going to go through all these now and uh, yeah, report back in about five hours. <laughs> now, I'm about halfway down the first one. This is the big, now I'll let you comment 
on what that shape looks like but anyway so I, I'm, I'm continuing down here now there's a really thin track here now I've got away with it but just in case you can't get away with it if you go if you follow the track and go to the two nearest proper solder joints and on this one it's this one and that one you can actually put a jumper across there just connect it with a wire or something like that and that will do the same job if you can't quite get into the the thinness of the track so that's another good tip there that's what you can actually do but look enough I just got away with it so I'm going to continue down here now and then to do the rest now youtubers we're all done as you can see it had really tiny ones there and it went all the way across all the way down there 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 all the way up all the way across and add a little one here now this was never a video on how to fix this particular uh, baby monitor thing it was just to show you how to repair a broken board now unfortunately I've actually looked at this a bit closer and the screen is damaged so uh, it's not gonna be able to be repaired but well it, it can be but there's no point it's cheaper buying one this was just to show you how to repair a board now actually I've I've plugged it in and the, the board is working so it, it actually repaired I'm getting power where I wasn't getting power before so I know I've actually fixed the board it's just the monitor the actual TV monitor unfortunately now which is gone so that's actually fixed the board which is great so it's as simple as that um, on the slightly smaller ones it's easier to to make the, the scratches a lot longer because of you it's very very thin so it's easier to make them longer um, but I managed to get them and like I said if 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 a bit of the boards missing like you, you it's completely missing if you if you um, follow the track and you can actually put a cable you can actually jump it completely across where it goes from here to here it doesn't really matter where it goes you can actually if you follow the track you can put a jumper to there now if you was going to do this and um, it's going to be left outside all the I don't know if you can see it on camera but obviously all the flux you want to clean the flux off and you can actually put some special stuff over it like a, a lacquer almost to stop it from rusting because if this was outside say in your shed or something all these all this would basically rust and obviously it would stop working eventually so there's no harm in doing that but yeah that's basically it the board is working that's how to fix a circuit board PCB board simple thumbs up the video hope you liked it hope it's helpful any questions just put them down below and uh, don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one